official day that these babies are going away. Hey guys, what is up? Welcome back to my channel. If you are new, welcome to my channel, Vibe with K Marie. And today I'm going to be talking about my breast reduction experience. So I'm making this video to explain and just talk about like my experience but then also to provide information to anyone out there who's looking to getting one, what they should expect, things they want to know, and questions they probably would want to ask their surgeon if they are going forward with this procedure. But if you're not subscribed to my channel, hit that subscribe button, give this video a thumbs up if it was helpful, and leave a comment down below if you've gotten one, if you're looking to get one. So if you know someone personally who is looking to get one, share this video with them. It might be helpful and probably relieve some of the anxiety or concerns they're experiencing. So I got my surgery July 2019. It is now March 2020 so it's been officially eight months post-op so I can really give you the full broad spectrum of what to expect. I'm gonna try to provide timestamps below. If I do it'll be in the description box so you can kind of click around and kind of get yourself through the video how you need to. So yeah so without further ado let's get into the video. Um, so I started off as a 36, well not started off as, but I was 36G, um, pretty sure I was probably a 36H, so it's triple D slash E, G, and then H, and I'm pretty sure I was pushing on to an H because I was spilling out of the G. Um, so I just felt like I was too big, I just felt like I wasn't proportionate to my body size, um, and I was experiencing a lot of shoulder pain, I had the indentations from the bra straps. Um, neck pain and a little bit of back pain so and I just even like when working out I would have to strap myself down with like two to three bras it just wasn't it a lot of people are like Killer, no like why do you want to do this you're just fine but like you guys don't really know like what I'm going through every single day I'm trying on clothes all these different things so I personally really just wanted one because I I needed it now I'm a 36 D so that brought me down, I don't know how many cups that is, it's quite a bit of cups. I'm, I don't, honestly, I probably am a double, a double D, but I haven't really worn an actual bra yet. I've gotten measured, but I haven't like worn, worn an actual bra, so I don't know. Um, technically, also, FYI, you're not really supposed to wear wired bras until six months, but I'm so like comfortable in two wearing like wireless bras that I haven't yet worn a wired bra so, and I'll insert pictures of kind of like before and after and you'll kind of be the judge if you can tell I don't know if people can tell but I can tell and I can feel it and that's really all that matters From the side point of view, you can tell they do not project out as much as they used to. They do give you a lift as well. So, um, like this is a wireless bra, so it's really not providing any support. So this is how they sit. I got my surgery done in Long Island, um, New York. If you're around the area or just the tri-state area in general, and you are looking for a surgeon, DM me. I'll let you know where I went and who he is. was free because I have insurance and insurance covered it if you choose to not do it through insurance which wouldn't make any sense it's about anywhere from six to ten grand I believe and um, that can vary just based on state or who you go to but while we're on the topic of cost and insurance I'll talk about insurance approval so for this surgery to get approved by insurance you have to go through a little bit of a tedious bit of work that's gonna take some time um, so if you do plan on doing this, you want to probably start working on this even if you haven't gotten a consultation yet, which is just speaking to your physician, your normal physician about getting this, telling them that you've been having, um, these issues, trying out specialty bras, um, going to a chiropractor and seeing if that's relieving your pain, going to a physical therapist, um, going to a dermatologist and getting skin cream. 
so you they want to see insurance basically wants to see that you've done other measures before um, going for surgery um, so you want to show them that you're take you've taken other measures to relieve your pain to relieve whatever it is that's bothering you and it still hasn't worked and so that's why you need the surgery so once you do that they will write a recommendation letter so either the physical therapist um, chiropractor whoever it is they will write a recommendation letter for you and based on your insurance or based on wherever you go most the one I went to required three letters it varies from place to place I don't know if the standard is like three letters but I needed three letters so I got those three letters in um, but I got that in after my consultation, which I'll talk about soon. But once you get those letters in, insurance approves it, and then, boom, you book the surgery. Now, let's talk about pre-opt. So, pre-opt your consultation. You want to do your research into finding the correct surgeon. You want to look at pictures. You want to look at pictures of people who have, like, breasts that look like you or have a skin color that looks like you. Um, just so you kind of get an idea and you want to see, you want to look at the scarring of the results. Do these patients get keloids? That could just be based on the patient, but you still want to look at the results of the surgeon's surgery. You want to see the profile pictures, like, not profile, but you want to see their profile with their pictures in there and stuff like that. So you want to do your research about who to go to because at the end of the day, they're breaking on your boobs. You want to make sure that it comes out perfect and you want to make sure it's symmetrical. So there are things to look for when you're looking at these surgeons and just their overall work and stuff. So make sure you choose the right person as well. So that takes time as well. But once you do, you want to have a consultation with them. You, at that moment, you want to ask them all the questions you possibly can, any concerns you have, anything you don't know, you want to ask them. So doing your research before is very important before you get to a consultation so you know all the questions you want to ask them. Knowing that, they just see if you're a good, um, a good um, consideration? No, that's not the word. A good choice if you're a good fit for the surgery. Um, so they're looking at that, they take measurements, they take pictures. And you really don't see them again until it's time for the surgery, so you want to make sure you get all your questions out. So in between that time, that's when you also want to begin working on in your insurance approval and stuff. Once you do that, they book the surgery and you go in for like blood work and they tell you like things to like not eat or things to like not medications to stop taking before you have the surgery. They'll tell you all of that. Um, you do blood work and you get ready for your surgery. The day of, you come in, they're taking vital signs and all that stuff, and they mark you up, and um, you talk to the anesthesiologist, they tell you what you're going to get, and the surgery I think is about three hours or so. Um, the surgical technique that I got was the anchor technique. Um, that's also something you want to ask them during the surgery, um, not during the surgery, during the consultation, what surgical technique are they going to be using? I got the anchor. For those who don't know what the anchor is, it's basically like, if that makes sense. I can just kind of draw it. Can I show you guys? So it looks like this. So like that's the, so that's like the scarring that you're left with. If your doctor or surgeon does a good job and you don't really have history of like keloid skin, well once again everybody's skin heals differently, but if they do stitch it up nicely you really shouldn't have much of an issue and they have so many different scarring creams out there. There's one that my doctor just told me about, scarring cream that, it's not even a cream, it's a treatment, it's called silicone sheeting and basically it looks like a long strip like this like in the shape of the scar and it sits on there all day and it's basically like a silicone type of treatment that's supposed to get rid of the scarring and honestly before even doing any of that like the scarring was fading pretty well with just using like cocoa butter and shea butter and stuff like that so for post-op post-op um the one thing you have that concerns most people is their pain um the pain i experienced i'm i really didn't experience much pain at all I don't know if it's because I had high pain tolerance, but it was more so of a tightness, uncomfortable, burning, definitely a burning sensation, which pain medication is not going to help with, um, but I just had like a fan just kind of blowing on my shoulder and my, my chest. I don't know if it's because I was moving too much, but I really did experience like a lot of burning, um, but it is like a, this tightness that you feel and that's really just not going to be relieved because it is tight. They <laughs> just got rid of so much tissue and they just kind of like squeezed it up um 
pushed it up to give you a lift so it is pretty tight you don't really want to bend down you don't want to abduct too much when you're putting clothes on you really want to try to keep your um your elbows in um, because you don't want to pull away you don't want to tear a stitch so you really want to kind of just keep everything nice and tight and together so you really want to keep your hands together even when you feel like you can and everything's good like chances are it's still not healed just because you feel like you can and you feel good you probably still want to keep your hands together take it from me because I actually popped a stitch it was it was a very little stitch so I'm fine but like you want to kind of still like avoid that the healing I guess they say it takes like a full six six months to a year to technically be fully considered healed I'm not too sure about that but um, as for like your time off and stuff you are gonna need at least a week off depends on your job um, if you're one who's like not moving and stuff like that then you probably just need a week off and you can go back to work if you are one that lifts things up you're gonna need a little bit more time unless your job can kind of work around you not lifting anything or stuff like that um, because yeah you definitely don't want to lift anything too heavy over like I think 10 pounds and stuff until maybe at least a month but that all depends those are questions that you want to ask your doctor how long of a time are you gonna need before you can go back to work but you also want to tell them like what is the activity level of your job so that will depend on how much time but if you're not someone who's doing anything crazy you could probably go back to work within a week at least I did and I work at like a retail store so the bra shopping experience um I think I just got so used to wearing wireless bras that I have just not went back to wired bras and I don't know if I ever will to be honest because they the wireless is just so comfortable and I got so used to it but there is a really 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 good bra once you are done with the surgery and they take off all the dressing you have to wear a wireless bra and this wireless bra I've worn all the time I had to buy quite a few on Amazon so I will put the link in the description box I can't remember the name but it's just a basic wireless bra it's pretty cheap and it comes in different colors and stuff you probably want to go for black because in the beginning um you are gonna have like drainage and different things and you don't really want to see all of that on the bra so probably opt out for black at the beginning it's also gonna be very tight very high and lifted and perky they will set a little bit after time so they're not gonna be as tight and high as they are in the beginning <laughs> get concerned that they cannot breastfeed after once again that goes into your surgical technique um, of the surgeon and what they do um, for the most part if you're doing something like the anchor the nipple is still attached to all the nerve endings and all the sub the breast supply or the milk ducts or whatever it's called I am a nursing student and I'm having trouble with my A&P, clearly. They cannot guarantee you, but for most cases, and once again, you won't really know until that time comes. But for the most part, if you're getting the anchor technique, that shouldn't really affect it. But that's something that you want to bring up to your doctor as well. Choosing the cup size, I don't know if I talked about that, but like a lot of people ask, oh, did you choose your cup size? I'm like, uh, no, I didn't. It doesn't really work like that. You can't really tell them like, oh, I want to be a D. They take it out by gram. Like, I think I have like 400 grams each. Maybe? I don't think I remember. Just how to do it based like on your body size and they try to make you as proportion. So you can kind of ask them like to make you as small as possible or proportionate. I would just ask them to make you proportionate to your body size because you really don't want to be too small. Like, you don't. <laughs> ask them to make you proportionate and that's typically what they aim for to make you proportionate anyway. But all in all guys, knowledge is power. So really just doing your research, YouTube, finding those questions online that you want to ask your doctor, watching videos like this so you know you kind of know what to ask and what to expect as well but knowledge is power i'll also provide a link down below of common frequently asked questions that will probably help you into figuring out like maybe some things you want to ask your surgeon and stuff like that but i hope this video was helpful guys and um if it is give it a thumbs up if you know anyone and you want to share this with them share this video with them and i'll see you guys in my next video Thank <laughs> you.